some review on that, but it's the day the church was born, and we celebrate everything else, let's celebrate the birth of the church. And the birth of the church is not a building, the birth of the church is you, and the birth of the church is I. And the Lord Jesus says the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Amen? It may prevail against the building, but it ain't going to prevail against his people. They will not prevail because Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. Amen? You guys may be seated. Thank you. We're going to get started. I want you to turn your Bibles to John chapter 7. And we're going to begin to read some scriptures there in John chapter 7. Actually, I want you to turn to John chapter 7 and we're going to look at verse 1 because this is also talking about the Feast of Tabernacles or some people call it the Feast of Weeks. But in John chapter 7, after these things, Jesus walked into Galilee, for he would not walk into Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' Feast of the Tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart this and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see thee see the works that thou doest. Now the Feast of Tabernacles, or some people call it the Feast of Weeks, uh, the Feast of the Tabernacles was dealing with this. This is when the, the priest would get a, a pitcher of water and they would take that water and they would, put, they would uh, have a parade, thousands of Jews behind him. And they would have a parade in the middle of the street. And they would go up with that water, with that pitcher of water during the Feast of the feast of the Tabernacles. But the scripture says in John chapter 7, verse 1, it also said, it, it says, now the Jews' Feast of the Tabernacles was at hand. Was at hand, and it means that great day of the feast, meaning it was the last day of this feast that they were having, and then the scriptures we're about to read is what Jesus said. Let's look at verse 5. For neither, neither did his brethren believe in him, in verse 6, then Jesus said unto them, In my time, my, my time is not yet come, but your time is already ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hated, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast, I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet come. When he said these words unto them, he bore still in Galilee. Now, I want you to look at verse, in John chapter 7, I want you to look at verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, the last day of the feast means the great day of the feast, the last day, the great day of the feast meant it was the last day. Jesus stood and cried, saying, is there any man that thirsts? Now, you got all these Jews falling behind a pitcher of water. So he says, is there any man that thirsts? He came the last day, not the beginning of the day, the beginning that started. He came that last day. He said, with a loud voice, he stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly, his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because, the, because Jesus, that Jesus was not yet glorified. So this scripture is just letting us know, Jesus says, you know, the, the picture of water is not going to do it. But all of those of you that believed on me, out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living water. And when you go ahead on and study the New Testament, you'll see that the rivers of living water were the nine supernatural gifts of the Spirit. We won't talk about them now, right now, but you can read them in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Out of your belly is going to flow rivers. Rivers of living water. The, and so when you have the, looking at the nine supernatural gifts of the Spirit, you're looking at the speaking gifts, the revelation gifts, and the doing gifts. There's three in each category, which uh, uh, makes up nine. And so uh, so we want we want to start there with he that believeth on me, he that believeth on me should receive. Amen? Amen. And so some people are uh, going to see what does it mean to be filled with the Holy Spirit? What does it mean? Why was it so important for Pentecost? Why is it so important for us to talk about the Holy Spirit? Why is it so important? 
them for the Holy Spirit to be in this day. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly should flow river of living water. But the Jesus at that time, because Jesus was still in the earth, the Holy Ghost was not yet glorified, even though the Holy Ghost was upon him. The Holy Ghost was not yet, not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. But when Jesus got out of here, what did Jesus tell us he was going to do? Send the Holy Spirit. The Father will send the Holy Spirit in my name. So when Jesus got out of here, I like the transference of power. I like the way God's, God himself, Jesus, God himself became him, himself the Son of God. And they still work together. I like how the Holy Ghost hovered over the earth and did the biddings of God and he's still God. And so they work together simultaneously. And then they have their age, God's age, then the son's age, era, E-R-A, -E age. And now this is the era, this is the age of the Holy Ghost. And this is the age of the church. The church of the Holy Spirit, not the age of, of government, not the age of America. It's the age of the Holy Spirit. Now another scripture I want you guys to turn to right now is I want y'all to go to uh, Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 1, uh, Theophilus, well, 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 Luke, you know, the Gospel of Luke, well, Luke wrote, Dr. Luke was a doctor, he wrote the book of Acts, according to history. The former treatise, or the former writing that have I made, O Theophilus, of all, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, unto the day in which he was taken up, y'all hear me now, unto the day in which he was taken up, that through the Holy Ghost, that, that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. I want you to note that. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, gave commandments to the apostles. They worked together, and yet they're one. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, after his suffering, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. So the Holy Spirit was a promise from the Father. Amen? Think about that. You want the promise of healing. You want the promise of prosperity. You want the promise of your needs being met. So why are we not crying out for the promise of the Holy Ghost? Amen? Amen. It's a promise. When they, <coughs> when they therefore will come together, they ask of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And when they had heard these things while they beheld him or was looking at him, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they were steadfastly looking towards heaven as he went up, <coughs> excuse me, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which said, and those two men was angels, of course, and which he said unto them, ye men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven shall come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Same way he went up in the cloud is the same way he's coming back. In the cloud. But I want to go back to verse 8. But you shall receive power when? After that. This is another after that thing. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So anybody in this room have the Holy Ghost upon them? Amen. So guess what you got? Power. Power. Glory to God. Every believer that has it. Now let me just tell you this. 
It's in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. When you got saved, there was an inflow of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit baptized you into the body of Christ. You see that 1 Corinthians 12, 13. John 7, 37 through 39, which we just got to reading, he says, he that believeth on me out of what? what? His belly is going to do what? Shall flow rivers of, of rivers of living water. This is the of the Holy Spirit. For the Holy Spirit was not, was not given because Jesus was not glorified. So, when you get saved, there is an inflow of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost baptizes you into the body of Christ. When you get filled with, somebody call it the filling of the Holy Spirit. I call it the filling with the Holy Spirit because Jesus came and baptized himself. The scriptures show you in John and the scriptures that Jesus baptizes you himself with the Holy Ghost. Okay? So now, you got two things. The inflow when you got saved with the Holy Spirit and when you receive the baptism with the Holy Spirit, then you begin to, you'll see uh, shortly, you'll read, you begin to release and speak in other tongues. So, the same way we need to ask the body of Christ is uh, how do you know you're filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, some people say I don't feel the Holy Spirit because I love. Some people say I don't feel the Holy Spirit because I got joy. No, you need to follow the scriptures and see how they knew they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's very important because that's what he says, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, unto me, a witness of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and into the whole entire world. A witness, people. The Holy Ghost is in you, has empowered you to be a witness. You got that? Do you know what a witness is? Tell me what a witness is. I witness account. I witness account. What does that mean? You saw for yourself. You saw it firsthand. You heard it firsthand. You was there firsthand. Now, the Lord says, you are equipped and empowered with the Holy Ghost that lets you know everything firsthand. So when people say, how do you know Jesus is alive? You can say he's in me. I know he's alive. How many of you know Jesus is alive? Amen. How many of you have him inside of you? Amen. How many of you have experienced Jesus? Amen. Well, it's because of the power of the Holy Ghost that's made you a witness, a living witness, that he's not dead, he's alive. Amen. 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 So, there is, so we don't have a hearsay Holy Ghost. You're not a hearsay Christian. I heard them say, Jesus is alive. Lie. I heard them say, you can get healed. I heard them say, you are a witness of me, Jesus says, when the whole Holy Ghost come upon you. So there's a coming upon you. And then an outflow of you, those of you that feel with the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit are to go into manifestation and operation. And, 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 and that's another tip of, of lesson because a lot of us are not walking in that. Allowing those gifts to flow out of us. Chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, as it set upon each of them. And they were all, see the script, next scripture, King James Version, and they were all filled with, not of, but with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these speak which speak are Galileans? Now why do we hear every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? You know, some people were saying, well, see, they were speaking in different languages. They weren't speaking in other tongues. No, that's not the truth. They had all these different people that was there. I'm not going to name them in verse 9 and 10. But they were... Uh, they were, all these people were there and, and, and their spiritual ears were opened up 
and they were hurt, hearing different people speak, but they were speaking in an unknown tongue. So verse 11, Cretes and Ara 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 Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues and wonderful works of God, speaking in our languages and wonderful works of God, even though they didn't know the language, they spoke in their language, that's which was in other tongues. Sometimes your tongue will be another language. It won't be the language. It won't be the language that you know. It could be a language that you do not know. Sometimes when you pray, in other times it sounds like you're doing something in China or something in Africa. Sometimes it sounds like that, but you don't know. I, huh? It's still an unknown tongue. You guys want to say it. <laughs> but anyway, I know I was in Haiti, and uh, I was speaking in tongues. And a, a person walked up to me, and, and uh, I forgot what they said, but they walked up to me and says, and then Patrick Elliott said, this, this, he said, you're speaking in his dialect. I said, well, what was it? Pat said, well, I don't know that dialect, so I don't know what, I, what you were saying. But isn't that amazing that that can happen? And it can happen supernaturally because the Holy Ghost is in you, and the Holy Ghost knows every language. Hallelujah. So now let's look at, uh, 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 they were marking these men, saying that they were full of wine, but Peter said this. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea, and all of you that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and listen to my voice. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that, but this is that, y'all say this is that. Which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Now hold on for a second. I'm going to say this. Look at one other thing. All right, I have to come back. I have to come back over to that. Because there was another scripture that I just got through reading. I, I, oh yeah. Verse 8. After that, the Holy Ghost is coming upon you. It's a that's in the scripture that's very powerful. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And this scripture, he says, this is what? That. This is that. Glory to God. It should come to pass in the last day, said God, I will pour out all my... Well, let me just back up. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And I've got this in my notes over here, but it's Joel chapter 2. And it should come to pass in the last day, said God. Y'all hear me? Yes. In the last days, he poured out his spirit. It will come to pass in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall what? Prophesy. Don't despise the dead prophesy, the king of 1 Corinthians 12 tells us. And, then, and your young men shall do what? Dreams. See visions, and your old men shall do what? Dreams. Dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before that great and noble day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you. How was he approved among them? By miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves know. And God is still wanting to do in the midst of us. To prove that Jesus is Jesus. Miracles, wonders, and signs. So we're going to start right there with the scriptures for right now. I just want to get that in there. But the day of the church was, was born. So uh, one thing that he also said in, in, in Acts chapter 2 was save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And these words were spoken by Peter on the church, the day the church was born. You can read that in Acts chapter 2. And these words still are relevant today. But there is so much more of the story because 50 days after Jesus was resurrected from the dead, his apostles still lacked direction and they had to remain in Jerusalem and wait. He told them to wait in Jerusalem until you be endued for power, for power from where? On high. Hallelujah. And so they had to wait there and waiting for that, for, for, for that next happening to happen. They had to remain there. And it's recorded in Acts chapter 8. We just read it. What happened? Yet 50 days later, they were still waiting. After, after, after Acts chapter 8, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you. 50, yet 50 days later, they were still waiting. 
So Pentecost, the meaning of Pentecost is what? 50. Pentecost means 50. So it was after 50 days that Jesus promised them or gave them that word in Acts chapter 8 after the resurrection. They were gathered in Jerusalem along with many other Jews, at least 120. And I think I heard over uh, this morning somewhere around 5 or 6 when they were doing, when they had the Pentecostal communion uh, with the Jews, and they were saying that a hundred, the man was saying, the priest was saying, a hundred, he had to always have 120 people to turn something into law during that time. And he said, look what God did. God made sure that he had 120 in the upper room. Wow. And make sure that that was law. Wow. So that was, that was the first time I ever heard of that. Not, you know, you know, that's just me, so I just wanted to share that. So uh, they were gathered together, many Jews, uh, and, to, and they were celebrating Shabbat, which is the Feast of Weeks, or the Feast of Tabernacles. And it was so called because of the seven weeks, seven, seven weeks, so it was called that because of the seven weeks. Seven weeks equals to 49 days, y'all got that? Of waiting, counting from Passover. Counting from the Passover to the end was 49 days. And this is where we get the Greek word Pentecost, which is translated 50th. The Pentecost holiday occurs 50 days after the Pas Passover, uh, which commemorates the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai and still celebrated as a Jewish holiday. Celebrations include the lighting of candles, the hearing the Ten Commandments in the synagogue. See, all this was going on. And even when they was doing that this morning for communion, they were reading all of these things. They was doing all this thing relative to, we come here a message. But they really go through a ritual of the, uh, the uh, Pentecost. And staying late to read and hear the words of the Torah, the law given to Moses. Because I understood that they had started it Friday night. So now I see why I was wondering why it started Friday night, so I knew they were doing a lot of reading. It is a special and sacred time as it is a reflection upon God's special relationship with the Jewish people. And the giving of the law represents that unique covenant. Now, as the apostles celebrate, celebrate, celebrate on this day, we have to wonder if there was an air of it. Did they have an air of expectation? I believe they did. What about you? After all, the death and the resurrection of Jesus occurred during the Passover feast, and uh, it was probable that the Holy Spirit would move in a mighty way during the next great feast, a great feast celebrating God's covenant and law. And you got different leaders now all over the world expecting something great to even happen today. So God didn't stop then, he's still doing it now. You know? And I'm telling y'all, we, we got we have to pray. Y'all, we have to pray for the body of Christ. We have to pray so much for the body of Christ. Because I I am sensing so much of uh, apathy and blind uh, Apostle Brian Echeverry talked about that. Apathy in the church, lack and no concern, and uh, they're more about themselves and they're about kingdom things. And, uh, and, and I'm not talking about just our ministry, I'm talking about the body of Christ as a whole, because I look at it as a whole, I don't look at it as a part, a whole, you guys. And we have got to pray for the body of Christ, because the different places I go and people I hear, there's just so much apathy and so much uh, inconsiderate and so much uh, laziness and so much you just, just you know and so I think that's the spirit of the world choking you know I remember Tracy Stewart, Prophet Tracy Stewart said and I don't have the information before me now but she talked about the python spirit that's in the church she said that python spirit you know a python snake when, when it wraps itself around you it does what? It squeezes, squeezes you it squeezes the life out of you it squeezes the breath out of you and air and breath represents the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And we need to cut that python spirit off the church for squeezing the life out of us. Y'all hear me? Yes. So I'm not I'm not trying to judge anybody right now. I'm just saying that we need to get we need to get Jesus is coming soon. And we need to get it's an urgency on me that we need to get things done and get things done quickly for the Lord. An urgency. And an urgency of the expectation of God. But if you're the only one expecting, do you think God is going to move? Yes. I don't think he's just going to leave me. 
I'm not the only one. I'm not. What's that? Who's that? Was in the Bible said I'm the only one. It was Elijah. It was Elijah the sure. He's the only. I'm the only one left. I'm the only one left. And God said he had about what five hundred to five thousand. Yes. They had about. Y'all hear me? And so, and so I'm not the only one. We got a lot of believers, but we might be scattered around. But we gotta have an urgency and a passion about the things of God. <clears throat> Let me get back on my subject. So <clears throat> the apostles celebrated that day. Were they expecting things? And we still need to be expecting the move of God. And so Jesus, it was not probably about the Holy Spirit would move in a mighty way. He did move in a mighty way on the day of Pentecost. And we read Acts chapter 2. This is that. Exactly what...